we listened to everything together, even though uh, as kids in the late 60s, mid to late 60s, we had sovereign band taste. Yeah. <laughs> you know, meaning that, that with only three exceptions uh, I've been able to come up with, Alex had certain bands, he bought their records, and I did the same, but we listened to everything all the time together. So yeah, influences ultimately, whether or not they were my favorites, are the same, they're shared, and, and sometimes became more important later in life than I thought they would be at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, we're talking about psychedelic rock, underground rock, blues rock, experimental rock, mm -hmm. progressive rock, <laughs> and later jazz, right. um, which was high school. So improvising was actually, without us knowing the word, one of our first impulses because I think for two reasons. One, there was a lot of so-called jamming going on in 60s music, which we really liked. We liked instrumental forays in music mm -hmm. and weren't very lyric uh, sensitive. And, uh, and the other reason was we just really, I don't know, we just sort of were lazy and liked to make stuff up and seem more <laughs> exciting somehow, I think. Um, it really didn't seem lazy, but it, it's funny to think of it that way. But we very early on kind of jettisoned any discipline whatsoever, song-wise, and, and would just go for the bold gesture of E drone with big rock beat or feedback with big rock beat or <laughs> something like that. The first time I was exposed to the word improvisation was probably relating to Indian classical music. And I think that uh, that was very intriguing and it made a lot of sense as an idea, but I didn't understand the, the nuances of it and the subtleties of Indian classical music improvisation. But I think that's probably the first time I heard the word and it's probably, well it is definitely the first time I thought of the pursuit of music as being something greater than mere entertainment. Mm -hmm. And so it seemed like a spiritual pursuit. Yeah. Also, uh, <clears throat> it um, invites the cultivation of a long attention span. You know, and this is something for some reason we didn't seem to have trouble with. Uh, we liked instrumental music and the fact that, you know, a, a piece of music could last about an hour was really not a major hindrance. I'm not sure why. Um, but um, we were attracted to just kind of extended instrumental music making from the beginning. Well, that's kind of hardcore. It's almost the <laughs> attitude being that you know, if you can't make it for an hour, you just, you just really don't have anything going on. You should be able to handle it. Right, right. You should be able to stay with it. Sanders and Eric Dolphy and all these things and I began listening to 
mostly jazz by the time I was in the ninth grade. And um, um, together with still some kind of progressive rock things. I, I think at this point, for example, mentioning the band King Crimson is important. They were a big influence on me. Um, and they were at a point by the time we were in high school where they were improvising roughly a third of their concerts anyway. <clears throat> so between that and the various uh, jazz groups that were really kind of at the frontier at that point using electric instruments, um, Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea, Early Weather Report, Miles, you know, all the people who played with Miles Davis. Um, all those Miles Davis records from the early 70s were uh, huge influences. John McLaughlin, Tony Williams. And um, it um, really changed the way I thought about music. Nels likes to say that after a while it became think important for both of us to pursue playing with different people in different contexts because in some ways the way we were able to uh, generate and maintain that rapport became kind of too easy, too familiar, not filled with surprise or unpredictability. What was unpredictable though is the fact that sometimes these strange, almost uh, impossibly obtuse musical ideas would just come out of nowhere in exactly the, in exactly the same moment simultaneously. Um, but there were a few times where it was just really hysterically funny. I don't know any other way to put it. I'm thinking particularly of one gig that we did with Vinny's band at the County Museum of Art here. And at first, I remember this. yeah, it was just for some reason it was just on, you know, like someone hit the switch and it was on through that whole three sets of music, and stuff would just happen where even the most strange accent in, behind somebody's solo or something would just happen exactly at the same moment, and then just you know we just after a while we just looking at each other and cracking up, and the thing that I remember most. Specifically, it was that during one of Nelson's solos, I don't remember what happened, we were into this this thing, and it just built and built and built, and uh, the uh, excellent um, saxophonist, woodwind player, Kim Richmond, was playing that gig with the band. And I remember he turned all the way around, so his back was to the audience, and he was standing, looking at both of us, just kind of with his mouth hanging open, looking back and forth between me and Nels, and then we both stopped on a dime at the same time and went back to whatever the the tune was kind of uh, the well, context was. I remember the music was kind of like a King Crimson thing. Uh, I basically kind of stopped overall. playing single line stuff and just went into a kind of a whole tone or half diminished major third pattern that just got higher and higher and Alex had completely changed tempo and gone into toms, no cymbals pounding and it sounded like we had gone into another tune and then it just stopped when I got to this certain point at the top of the uh, neck and went back into Vinny's tune and I remember Vinny thinking, I mean look, Vinny looked like he was terrified that he had lost his gig. Because <laughs> <laughs> this was early yeah, on right. in his many year tenure at playing summer and fall gigs at the County Museum and I think that we were trying to be really conservative or at least he thought we should try to be really conservative, somewhat conservative. Mm -hmm. Uh, he seemed to be crouched down a, with a, yeah. with a uh, slightly pale expression. <laughs> yeah, but, anyway, so but Kim, it, when it was over and we went back into the tune, which was probably some kind of a walking group kind of thing or something, Kim just, he looked at us and he shook his head like this and he went, It's like one mine! <laughs> <laughs> it was very good.